none of these relationships are not teaching anything germane to the kingdom. A lot of these relationships are just like kingdomless. They they have no fruit of the kingdom. Uh, that's your girl. That's your guy. I mean, that's your cat. Y- y'all kick it. I mean, whatever have you. You are in relationship, but you have no connection. Absolutely as it relates to the kingdom of God and the principles of God's word. I was meditating on this the other morning. I believe it was. Biblical principles are because of biblical that equals biblical promises that creates biblical posterity. Okay, God is strictly about God's plan. That is the God's promises that will cause God posterity. And so I'm teaching all of these things because things are in simple posterity is generation not prosperity prosperity you have in posterity I mean for generations to come your children's children will be blessed you got it but it's a result of your teaching them teaching them to observe okay that's that that sounds like 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show, teaching them to observe, study to show, teaching them to observe, study to show, not just study to quote or study to know, but study to show. What you study is no good if you're not showing it. Teaching them, what is that? Second Timothy 2. Okay. Be diligent to present yourself approved. That's the new. Let me see. Let me let me see it in the King James because that doesn't quote it. Just you all are doing a great job. Let's see it in the King James. Study to show yourselves approved unto God. Here it is. A what man? A who man? A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the truth. What kind of man are you? Are you putting in the work? You study. Go back to that King, New King James. Let me see that. I don't think I really have even looked at that. Thank you so much. They're back in the studio. Yeah, and, and this is the word, uh, guys. I want to give you. I want to give you the B I B L E. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a who worker who does not need to be ashamed, right dividing. Why do you suppose it says rightly dividing? Why didn't it just say dividing the word? It's very clear and being conspicuous, obviously conspicuous that we have to rightly divide the word because if you can rightly divide it, it's obvious that you can wrongly divide it. And then one of the things I've been doing while I'm taking a break, and I'm not on vacation. If I was on vacation, I wouldn't be here today. When I vacate, you gonna know it. I'm gonna be gone like, <laughs> I'm gonna be gone. Just like I was for that four months when I was in the hospital. You all didn't see me for a very But I'm not going to take one of them breaks again. You better believe that. You can only divide the word of God. And I got to tell you, I've been jumping in on different ministries, especially on Sunday. And it is amazing to me how much the word 
wrongly divided. They wrongly divided. Let's see what it says there. Y'all just with me. Let me just walk through this thing here. Always be eager to present yourself before God as a perfect and mature minister. Always be eager to present yourself without shame as one who correctly explains the word of truth. Let's try it in the message Bible. Different angles bring about different perspectives and people hear it all different kind of ways and it's important for you to get it. Wow. Repeat these basic essentials, essentials over and over to God's people. Repeat. Oh man, this is so good to me. I'm glad I asked for it. This is starting at 14, however. It says, repeat these basic essentials over and over to God's people. Warn them before God against what's that pious nitpicking which chips away at the faith. It just wears everyone out. Concentrate on doing your best for God. Work you won't be ashamed of laying out the truth plain and simple. Stay clear of pious talk that is only talk. Words are not mere words, you know. If they are if they're not backed by the godly light, they accumulate as poison in the soul. Woo, Jesus. Okay, go back now to Matthew chapter 28. Let's look at verse number 19 again. Verse number 19. This is good stuff to me. I don't know about you all, but I'm enjoying every bit of it. This is just to drive this home. Uh, Pastors Tim and Bree will be with me again next Wednesday, okay? Look at verse number 20, please. Verse 20 says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And yo, I mean, lo, I am with you when always, even until the end of the world. Okay, now, a very interesting passage of scripture and uh, Pastor Bree gave the definition. Go to five of uh, Matthew. I like five. Actually, you can take it from the top because I just love five, period. Um, the number of degrees. The word disciple defined is just simply student or pupil or learned one. Those those are some of the definitions <clears throat> or descriptions of the disciples in the definition. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on the mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Sat down. Then he opened his mouth. How many people are you sitting down with? He opened his mouth and did what? Taught them. Then we just read teaching them to observe all these things that I'm commanding you. And then we, we're the same ones that when they sleeping in churches. Man, wake up over there. Let me go and sleep in my list. Oh, you looking down at his phone. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'll mess with that in a minute. Yeah, that's my main man. Okay, watch this. Teaching them. Teaching them. Teaching them. When last time have you set your family down, man of God, to talk them from the word of God? Blessed are the poor. This is what he began. Empowered to prosper are the poor in spirit. For there is the kingdom of heaven. Right? Verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Can you see it? And we sitting out there. And, and it says about as high as it is here. And we chilling. And there are palm trees. And, you know, I don't know if in fact what type of year was it winter 
is it? You know, in the winter, it's just a nice breeze. Of course, in the region when Jesus uh, lived and stayed and ministered, he said, empowered to prosper on the meat, for they shall inherit the earth. He went on to teach, boy, empowered to prosper are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Verse number seven, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Can you see this? I mean, the disciples wanted to, he went up on the mountain so he could protect his voice. The disciples sat down with him, right? Empowered to prosper are the pure in heart, for they emphatically shall see God. Eight is my, my scripture, eight and nine, but nine is I love it. Blessed are the peacemakers. Some people are indeed not peacemakers. For they, peacemakers, shall be called the sons of God. All right? Go on to the next verse. 